Hi everyone, good morning. I went to church today and Father Frank gave a lovely homily. The readings today were about God's love, His faithfulness, and how God stands guard over Israel and over us. And Father Frank gave a lovely reflection about how uh, Jesus is the bread of life. In the first reading, he had mentioned that we have the image of the vineyard being planted and then those who plant in the vineyard they eat the fruit from that and also when we invite people over we always share food and we offer them that hospitality and in the gospel it's about Jesus being the food for us being the food that nourishes and how he brings healing to the woman that is asking for healing for her daughter. If we don't feed our bodies, Father Frank mentioned how they break down. And if we feed our bodies, they are well and they are whole. So that was a beautiful reflection that he gave and I enjoyed it. It's also nice because usually people focus on the crumbs from the table in that gospel passage and they focus on Jesus being harsh, but Jesus actually was not being harsh. He was mentioning or talking about how he had come for the house of Israel, because that's the theme and that was Jesus's teaching that he had come from the, for the house of Israel. And that's not Father Frank saying that, that's me saying that. If you go and you read the readings for today, the New Testament, the Old Testament, and the Psalm, it's very clear how the message is for Israel, and they are God's people, and we are joined onto that because we receive the Eucharist, because we partake in Jesus's Eucharistic celebration, in the partaking of the Last Supper, in receiving his body and his blood in the Eucharist. And that's the gift that is passed on to us. It's the gift that is given to us. And it just shows the courage of the woman to approach Jesus, to approach the master and ask for healing, ask him for his blessing, ask him for the food that he gives to his people freely. She's asking for herself, for her family. So I enjoyed the readings. That's actually one of my favorite readings. And when people talk about the demonic and being possessed, I mean, it's not really, the demonic is not something that is huge, big things. I mean, yes, there's extreme uh, possession where exorcists are called in and they do the uh, exorcism prayers over people. But the demonic is, part of our life. It's part, there's good and evil in life. And so when we go to the church and we pray the I confess, that is a mini exorcism prayer. It's asking for God's forgiveness. And the good we do and the bad we do, that's all part of the faith journey. It's not something that it's like, oh, this one is possessed or, oh, you know, be careful of that one. She might be possessed. It's not that kind of a thing. If you read on the healings in the Bible that Jesus did, they were, they were the extreme cases where people were living outside of the community. They were cutting themselves. They were not clothed. They were naked, going about naked. They recognized Jesus immediately as the Son of God. And they asked him, what do you want to do with us? Like, what do you, why are you coming here? But it's not that extreme in all cases. And for us, we know that evil touches our life as well as good. And when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we fill ourselves with the goodness of Jesus, with his love. And we take that out with us into the world so that we can be the eyes, the hands, the ears. We can be the body of Christ in our world, in our daily lives. And so that was my part of the reflection on it, but I did enjoy Father's homily and it's nice to have him at our church and to hear his 
services, here he's mass. But if you want to read the readings, they are available online. You can look them up, um, just put in Catholic Church daily Bible readings and you can pull them up. The uh, United States Conference of Catholic Bishop has a page on Facebook. You can also find them there and you can read them and see how they touch you or what moves you in them. But it's always Jesus is there and that freedom that we have to go to him, to ask him to approach the master. And when his answer is no, as sometimes it is like it was for the woman in this case initially, then we have the courage to say, we will even take the crumbs from your table if you will give that to us. But Jesus doesn't just give us the crumbs, he gives us the whole feast. He invites us to the Eucharistic celebration and he says, this is my body and my blood and it's given for you. And that's the, the celebration of our Mass. That is what the Eucharist is for us as Catholics. It's Jesus' real presence in that Eucharist and in that wine which gets changed. And if you don't believe me, you can look up on the internet. There are recorded scientific proofs that it takes place and it has been proven even down to the blood type it's been proven in the Eucharist and that is the miracle of our Mass it's the miracle of our celebration and it's the miracle of the crumbs that fall from the table because when we eat Jesus's body and we drink Jesus's blood we become a part of him just like in our family line we have a bloodline we have Jesus' bloodline in us because we partake in that Eucharist. And today was my dad's birthday, my departed dad. So he was very faithful to his Catholic faith and I gave thanks for his life and for all the good memories I had with him. Of course it is a sad day in some ways because I don't have him with me like it is for everybody that knew him. But it's also a day for me to celebrate his faith and the faith that he passed on, the faith that was in our home, and the prayers, the mass, the prayers we said, the angelis together, the rosary, all those things that he instilled in me, which I have tried to be faithful to. I'm not always faithful to it, but I do my best and I do keep it. My faith is strong, but I don't always say my daily prayers, I don't always go to Mass and sometimes I miss the daily Mass, depends on my health. But it's good to think about the influence and the impact that our parents have on our faith and on our lives and we can make a choice when we become adults, we can make a choice whether we want to receive that body and blood of Christ or whether we want to turn away from it because everybody has a choice. Nobody is forced to receive it. It's our choice. So that's what the readings were about today. And I just wanted to share that because it was a beautiful homily. I really liked how Father focused on the bread and the hospitality and Jesus being the source of food for life and nourishing us and nurturing us. Because too often people focus on the demonic and the healing of the demonic or the healing of this woman going to Jesus asking for her daughter's healing and her daughter is possessed and I don't think that's the main focus of the scripture. I think it's about Jesus being so loving and so faithful first to Israel that he's even willing to extend that love and that faithfulness to people outside of his community because that is the Jesus that he is. He's the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords and he's the one who is in control and he's not the one that's going about beheading people and cutting off heads and saying an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He's not that Jesus. He's the Jesus who will go to the cross and challenge Pontius Pilate and he will have the boldness and the audacity to say this kingdom is not of my world because if it was you would have no power over me. That's the power of Jesus. 
and it's the power of his love to welcome us and to say that he is still faithful to Israel, but he welcomes us to his banquet if we are willing to partake in it.